I'm Mark Halley and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. In episode one of the Saltwater Mixing Station series, I talked about what a mixing station is and why it's important to have one. In this video, I'll talk to you about mixing station component selection and share with you my experiences after building lots of mixing stations for my VIP clients. Ideally, your mixing station has equal size containers for your RODI water and your salt water. This way, when your salt water container is empty, you simply move all the water from the RODI side into the salt water side, add your salt, and you're ready to go for another water change. This is particularly important for those of you that want to do automatic or constant water changes. Think about it this way. If you had a 55 gallon container for your salt water mixing, like I do, but your RODI container is only 20 gallons, you move the 20 gallons over into your salt water mixing container, now you need another 30 gallons. That means you got to wait for your RODI unit to make 20 gallons, move that water over, wait for it to make another 10 gallons, and then move that water over. Here's a hint. RODI units don't make water very fast, especially when it gets really cold, like in the winter. You don't want to be waiting if you need to do a water change, and you don't want to have to turn off your auto water changes for days on end while you're waiting to make up that RODI water. So have equal size containers for your saltwater mixing side and your RODI side. One of my old mixing stations had mismatched sizes between the RODI container and the saltwater container. And let me tell you, that was not fun. I overflowed the smaller container several times. I strongly recommend you match container size as it will make your life much easier. That being said, what size containers do you want? My rule is to have enough water on hand to do at least a 20% water change. If you can do a 20% water change, then you've got a shot at making a dent in the water parameter you're trying to fix with a water change. Note that the 20% water change rule can be split between containers. For example, between my display tank, hammer coral holding tank, sump and frag tank, I'm at 550 gallons total water volume. Therefore, a 20% water change equals 110 gallons. My saltwater mixing vat holds 55 gallons and my RODI vat holds 55 gallons for a total mixing station volume of 110 gallons or 20% of my total system volume. But wait, shouldn't your saltwater mixing container be 20% of your total system volume? That way you can do a 20% water change without having to mix up more salt water. Yes and no. In an ideal world, your saltwater mixing vat alone would be 25% of your system volume. And after installing dozens of mixing stations on clients' tanks, it's not feasible for most people. As water containers get larger and therefore start holding more water volume, they tend to get wider. Eventually they get so wide they won't fit through a doorway. Now you can get horizontal tanks, but most people are more challenged in the horizontal dimension than they are in the vertical dimension. Therefore, available space is likely going to be the final determining factor when it comes to water container size. Or you can be like my friend Jerry who has a two-story fish room. His mixing tank is 12 feet tall and holds 2,000 gallons of water. Here's a hint, most of us aren't like Jerry. I'm okay with the 20% rule being split between both containers because if you really need to do a 20% water change, then you can pump the water in your saltwater mixing vat into your tank, move over the RODI water, add salt to get it to the right salinity, and then add that water into your tank. Getting the salt water to the right salinity should only take an hour or two, and here's a hint. Your tank won't crash if your return pump is off for a couple hours. This fact is especially true if you keep your power heads on and your tank doesn't get hot or cold. Okay, we've got container size nailed down. Now, what to use for the containers. First up, the mixing station container that nearly every reefer has had. Ladies and gentlemen, I give you the bird trash can. Easy to find at your local home improvement store, not very expensive, you can get wheels for it, it's easy to drill and modify, and comes with a lid. Pro tip, make sure you buy the lid too. For those of you looking to pinch pennies, leftover food container barrels that you can probably find on Craigslist can work too. However, use them at your own risk because you don't actually know what was stored in those containers. For the more dedicated reefer, vertical or horizontal containers look very clean and professional. They also come in a variety of sizes. You can get them translucent in color so it's easy to see the water level inside of them. Note that these containers can be hard to find and shipping charges often exceed the price of the container itself. If you can find them locally, you're lucky. Custom containers are great for odd situations such as when the mixing station has to go under the tank. I've done this on a couple builds and it works really well. Alright, we've got container size down and what to use for containers. 
Now what about the pump to drive the mixing station? For those of you with your mixing station far away from your tank or your sump, say in a garage or a basement like this one, you need to keep in mind head pressure. The pump that you choose for your mixing station has to have enough strength to push against the force of gravity and all the head pressure provided by the plumbing to get the water from your mixing station into your tank or your sump. If your mixing station pump can't get the water from the mixing station into your sump or your tank, then you're back to hauling buckets, and that really sucks. Here's a pro tip on building redundancy into your system. Have your mixing station pump double as a spare for the return pump on your main display. If your mixing station pump is the same size and model as the return pump on your display tank, if your return pump goes down, simply take the pump off your mixing station, put it on your display tank, and you're back in business. Here are some bonus items that make your mixing station really nice. Stands to get the containers to working height. Drip trays to catch spills because you will overflow your mixing station. I repeat, you will overfill your mixing station. Double bonus, install a drain in the drip tray to protect against spills. Of course, make sure the drain leads to a floor drain. Don't just dump it on the floor. Choose good valves for your mixing station. The white ones you find at home improvement stores can seize up in time. I've cut out plenty of these valves, and now I wised up and use better valves. On-demand RODI water. If you're running a water test that calls for RODI water or you want to rinse off some equipment, it's very convenient to have your RODI water come out through a tap as opposed to having to dip a container into your RODI vat. Here's an on a client system. They have a simple drinking water tap that I plumbed into the RODI system. Touch of a button and they get RODI water. Lids. Lids help keep your water clean and keep foreign objects from falling into your containers. Clamps. Very useful around a mixing container. What about a heater for your mixing container? I don't recommend you keep the heater in your mixing container all the time as the chemical reactions that go on when salt is mixing can be hard on the seals on the heater. Instead, once you're getting to the correct salinity for your salt water, add in the heater if you need to do a large water change. Pro tip for those of you doing automatic water changes, you don't need to heat the salt water because you're putting in so little water at a time when you do your automatic water changes, it's not gonna change your tank's temperature. That's it for episode two of the Saltwater Mixing Tank series. In the next episode, I'll talk about plumbing design for your mixing station and walk you through a couple different mixing stations that I've built for clients. I'm Mark Callie and Mr. Saltwater Tank coming to you on behalf of saltwateraquarium.com. I'll catch you in the next episode.